Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, the football podcast we bring you each and every week on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Head over to YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. Audio versions of the show are available through Spotify, Podbean, iTunes, wherever you pick up audio versions of the show, you will find us there. This is your Champions League Match Week 5 preview. Darren joining me as always for these European previews. How are we doing, Darren? I'm doing good, Noel. How are you, buddy? Good, yeah. Not a bother at all. Good to have you on. Um, let's kick it off with Tuesday night Group E, Dynamo Kiev versus Bayern Munich and Barcelona versus Benfica. Bayern Munich already sailed through into the knockout stages without a shadow of a doubt, but this is Barcelona just need to beat Benfica, don't they really? And then they've cemented their place in the next round. They do, but I don't think this is going to be easy, I have to be honest with you, you know. Uh, Benfica have been doing, playing well recently and they've goals in the team. Um, I think the one... Saving grace for Barcelona is they had the clean sheet the weekend, which is very unlike them. So obviously Xavi has got them slightly better drilled than they were on their mm. And uh, yeah, they can they can use that as a platform to go out. But geez, I wouldn't be overly confident as a Barca fan. Um, and this could be a big hit for Xavi very early on in his Barcelona career, you know, um, his managerial career, I should say. Mm. If, if things don't go the way Barca want them to, you know. Yeah, it'd be kind of unthinkable to see Barcelona dropping into Thursday night football, wouldn't it, really? It, it really would be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really, really would be. Mind you, you know, we've had to endure Thursday night football for a couple of years now, so, you know, it happened to the best of us and all that. Stranger things could happen, all right. Um, but I, 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 think they'll, I think they'll push through. I, I think you're looking at Bayern and Barcelona. I think that's the way it'll filter out anyway. Um, let's move on to Group F. This is a real good one for you guys. Uh, Villarreal versus United and Young Boys versus Atalanta. This is a really interesting group insofar as that if if results go potentially the wrong way tomorrow night and Villarreal were to pick up a win and Atalanta were to pick up the win, you boys would find yourselves down on third, wouldn't you? We would. Now, the only saving grace is we're home to Young Boys on the last night and you'd then either be hoping that the two boys drew in the final game or one of them tumped the other one and you'd, you'd take the second spot then, you know? Yeah. Um, I think I think this is important for United, but I don't think it's last chance to lose. Um, mm. and, I, and I'd be hopeful we can go for, away from home and get a result tomorrow night. Um, I don't think we'll win, but I'd be confident we could get a point out of it, you know? Hopefully get a draw, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. certainly you don't want to be going into that last game in the group with that kind of pressure heaped on you. Now, I would still expect you to go out and do a professional job against young boys, but, yes. you know, a lot of people would have expected you to do a professional job against Watford and various other things like that. So or against young boys in the fourth week. Exactly, exactly. You and, know? So. you know, Imagine giving up a couple of goals to them in that last game and the group and stuff like that would be unthinkable, you know. Young boys were no mugs, you know. They, they they played well against us and they've done okay in the group. So I think maybe they haven't got the results, but certainly some of their plays have been decent. So I wouldn't like to disrespect them and just think we're going to roll them over in the last night, you know. Yeah. Uh, group G, Lille versus Salzburg and Sevilla versus Wolfsburg. Very interesting group, this one. Um, Still a lot of play for, isn't it? Still all to play for with seven, five, five, and three being the seedings. Um, yeah. Lille have come back into it slightly as well because they were quite disappointing in the first rounds of fixtures. That's right. Um, but Sevilla now find themselves rooted to the bottom of the, the group at this stage now, which is very unlike them as well. Normally, you would look at Sevilla as being a shoe in to get through to the knockout stages, you know, initially anyway. Yeah. Um, and especially in a group like this, it's not that competitive a group, really, you know. Um, it, it maybe doesn't have the, the big names in it. But I think mm. it's it's you know there are a couple of squads with 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 some talent on show you know um like Lille were French champions last season you know yeah um and and there is a little bit of talent in there um but I know what you're saying it's not got any of the marquee European clubs has it you're looking at four teams that are of similar kind of standard even though Lille won the French league but we've seen what happens what's happened this year since mm-hmm. they've won it you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, Group H is the big one of the night Apart from United and Villarreal obviously uh, Chelsea versus Juventus And Malmo versus Zenit Obviously Malmo and Zenit just playing out for the numbers But really this game Chelsea versus Juventus This is the lay down a marker to see who could potentially Go on and win the group isn't it Yeah obviously Chelsea will, You know be looking to get back On track after the defeat, the defeat in Turin You know mm. um, But I think this would be a tough game for Chelsea And um, 
I think they've they've been professional so far in the Champions League. Mm. But I don't think they've been flashy or I don't think we've seen what they're completely capable of yet. It's been workmanlike. Yeah, it has, absolutely. Mm. Um so yeah, I think this will be tough for Chelsea. I yeah. think um I, I probably don't expect them to get the win if I'm honest. I think Juve will come and you know, I think Juve will probably get a point out of this tomorrow night, which should be enough to get them through um, in yeah. fourth place. Yeah, Juve are missing a couple of key players tomorrow night, though. I think Chiellini is out and Diabala is a doubt. There's a few of them, but um, it wouldn't be unlike Morata to pop up and get a goal. Sure, it wouldn't. Staying and living, isn't he? Yeah. Staying and living, that boy. But that, but that would be, I mean, Stamford Bridge would be the place where he'd pop up and put the nail in, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think... I don't know. I, I've just a feeling Chelsea tomorrow night would be too strong for them, um, and I think it's a, I think it might be a question of how many as opposed to the result. That's what I'm thinking really in terms of that group. I I I think you I think Juventus when they beat them over there in Turin, although they bet them as well, it wasn't really the tail of the the match really. You know what I mean? I thought they caught Chelsea a little bit cold that night, um, and I thought Chelsea had a couple of opportunities as well, um. So I think Chelsea, I think Tuchel will have the boys ready for it because it's vital for them to win that group going into the next phase, you know. I think they'd like to win it, but, you know, I think in the Champions League, you're going to have to be a certain calibre of side along the way. So You're, you're going to meet someone eventually along the way, aren't you? But but you'd, yeah. want, you'd, you'd like to be avoiding the likes of the Bayern Munichs in that next round and stuff like that, you know what I mean? That would be key. You would, but, and again, uh, not to diminish that, but I don't know whether sometimes you're better off getting them there in the semi-final, you know, because maybe they're not quite up for it as much as they would be. And Do you know what I mean? Because when you're at that semi-final stage, the lads can smell those medals. They can smell yeah. that trophy. They're very, very close to it. Yeah. And they just seem to turn things on. Like, so many times we've ended up with, with a similar kind of a last four in the Champions League. And you can yeah. almost tell what's going to happen just because... We've been there before, type thing, you know. Yeah. But um, no, listen, I think um, that Chelsea would love to win that group, um, mm. but I, I don't think it'll be an easy night for them tomorrow night. I have to say. Mm. Yeah, we shall see. Interesting though, but two two fabulous toys coming up tomorrow night between United and Villarreal and Chelsea and Juventus. It's going to be a great definitely night, great night of action. Um, let's move on to Wednesday. Group A: Bruges versus Leipzig and City versus PSG. This is really just for a. Uh, this is just working out really the group, isn't it? I know Brewers are kind of hanging around, but not really. And you called Le- it Le- early Leipzig on. Are, Leipzig are going to finish Brewers off tomorrow on Wednesday night. That's Leipzig have, have they've come into the come into the mat themselves in the last few weeks. You know, start to score goals again. The boy and Kuku has looked unbelievable, um, and and they've they started to play a bit of football again under their, their new gaffer and stuff like that. I expect Leipzig to beat Brewers and, and put them to bed in this so to speak and then I think it's about uh, City and, and PSG fighting it out for that top spot um, but to be honest with you I see this is going to be a tough tough game week for City I, I really fancy PSG I know they haven't been um, hitting their straps necessarily in, in any of the competitions but I just think when they come up against the slightly better side they've enough to nick them yeah. you know I think it's because again you're going to look at the likes of City and City are going to want to play football against these boys, whereas most of the teams that PSG come up against are just thinking, "Let's get out of here without getting a hoid." Yeah, yeah, it'll be certainly interesting. Two teams who like to play football who could yeah. cancel each other out. What do you, What are you thinking in that one tomorrow? Are you looking at a draw? Or do you think PSG might do them? Or yeah, I don't think PSG will do them. Do City, um, and I think Leipzig will do uh, Bruges. Interesting. So that that would end up with City then. Coming second in the group potentially, and then staring down the battle of a Bayern Munich or something like that in the draw, which would be or, interesting. Or staring down the barrel at an Atalanta or a Villarreal. Potentially, yeah, potentially. So you know, you just don't but know you, how the you, draw's you, gonna go. You do kind of know though when when you go through to that draw, don't you? And you see Man City there if they're second and stuff like that. You you look at the draw, and we'll obviously cover the draw on the show, but. Yeah. You know, you know, Bayern's gonna be pulled out, don't you? With the Pep Link and all there, it just happens all the time, doesn't it? Could happen, all right. Yeah, let's move on. Group B: Atletico Madrid versus AC Milan and Liverpool versus Porto. Obviously, we know Liverpool are already qualified and gone through with maximum points from four games. 
So it's really down to AC Milan are kind of really out of the running at this stage. I know they have a point there, and if they won tomorrow night, they might be able to climb above Atletico, but I just don't see them. I don't see them having the quality to do it. It's a big um, if, isn't it? Yeah, who who are you fancying to come second in this group? Are you thinking Porto or Atletico? All along, I, I kind of thought this was going to be between Liverpool and Atletico 1-2, but Porto have done well to hang on in there, haven't they? And yeah. I think, you know, they're going to be at an advantage with Liverpool already qualifying at this stage. Mm. Um, which means you guys might decide to rest one or two. Oh, we, uh, we'll 100% play a different team, no doubt about it. You know, it. And, and that could be that could mean, listen, maybe you get maybe they get a draw over it. But, you know, it's not going to be easy going to Anfield, is it? Um, for Porto, they typically don't have a great record in England. They have a better record in Portugal against English teams. Mm. But they don't have an amazing record um, in, in England. And uh, I think it'd be tough even against maybe Liverpool's second string or mm. part of their second string. Like, if you look now, yeah. like, so what's he play? Simakas instead of... Uh, Robertson, some would argue yeah. on current form, you're not really dipping there, are you? No. You know, you might have Matip and Kanate again. The yeah. boy Kanate's looked very, very good. Yeah, you'd certainly, uh, you'd certainly be looking at a front line, probably Minamino and Origi out there, wouldn't you? Possibly Minamino and Origi, or maybe he goes with one of the one of the two boys. You know? Yeah, um, maybe. Mm. Maybe he goes. Maybe he goes Salah, Minamino, and Origi in the centre. Mm. Because yeah. we know Salah doesn't like to miss games. He just wants to score goals. Yeah. You yeah, know? It'd be interesting to see what midfield he goes with as well. But I don't think he'd be risking too much because it's when you've qualified and you've won the group at this stage, it's time to really hold all your aces really for the league, isn't it? And don't be doing that and silly. Yeah, I think he probably plays Henderson, doesn't he? Yeah, coming back in as well. Yeah, he could do with a bit of game time. Yeah. You could do with game time. I think he'll give Henderson some game time and stuff like that. And so it's not like if you look at it, it could be it. It could be a relatively strong team. Does he give young Keelan Kelleher a game? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Again. Although you'd probably want you'd probably want, yeah, possibly, but maybe with Allison. Um, I know he was good against Arsenal there at the weekend, but his form had dipped slightly in the Brighton and the the um the West Ham game, certainly. So maybe you might want to keep him in there to keep that bit of confidence going going into the possibly. Southampton game at the weekend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see who they feel. But it's um, also you look at Atletico Madrid at the moment, they're going a bit crazy, aren't they? They're kind of losing the run of themselves a little bit. Simeone's just lost, very, it. very unathletic, like, isn't it? Yeah, very are uncontrolled. We, are we getting to a stage where the boys at Atletico have just had a little bit too much of Simeone? Yeah, I think with the creative flair they have there, if you're shackling that, it must get tiresome at times. You know yeah. what I mean? When you look at Joe Felix there, Griezmann, Suarez, like he has an abundance of riches there in terms Carrasco, of quality of play. Lamar, like there's a lot. You know what I mean? And then you're looking at him saying that he wants to play this kind of grinding kind of football, that for lads like that who are flair players, it must be like nearly like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like rondos to those guys, isn't it really? Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it'd be interesting to see what an Atletico Madrid team would be like if you had a flair sort of manager in there, you know. Imagine if imagine if now I know it never happened, but imagine if they had it like a Zidane or something like that. Those boys would probably be on fire now. I know you'd never get Zidane going to Atletico, obviously, with the links, but no, but I know I understand where you're coming from. Like what would what would they be like with a Ten Hag in there? Yeah, because he is legitimately someone you could go after and say, mm. listen, this is what you know, I actually score on goals for fun at the minute and have been while he's been in charge, you know, mm. and he's given the team a license to roam and to, to you know, like, play a certain way, play yeah. fun foot and express themselves. Mm. And I mean, I think we've only seen glimpses of what the boy Joe Felix is capable of. You know, he's gone for a lot of money um, and I don't believe we've seen half of what he's capable of because of maybe the Simeone effect. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, let's move on to Group C. Uh, Besiktas versus Ajax and Sporting versus Dortmund. Um, this is a shootout for second place, isn't it? Because Ajax have already qualified maximum points as well. Yeah. Um, but Sporting, Dortmund are away to Sporting, and it's fair to say that Dortmund on their travels this season haven't necessarily been the Dortmund or the Erling Haaland that we know. Um, so this could be yeah. a tricky one for them, but this is this is a crucial one because this is like a shootout for second spot. 
this is this is a big game for Dortmund. Mm. Um, and I just think they're going to have too much for Sporting. Um, I know Sporting have cropped up with a couple of results. We talked about them a few weeks ago and stuff like that. But, and they really come to life in this group. But I think this is a big game tomorrow night. I think when, or Wednesday night, I think when, when the big teams really, really need it in these situations, they can just find enough to get them over the line. Mm. Yeah, I expect yeah. Dortmund to just get out of Lisbon with a victory and, and get them into that next round. Yeah, I, I think so. I think yeah. so as well, yeah. But again, if Sporting turned them over, it wouldn't surprise me at all um, with what they've been doing on their travels. But safe to say, that would be very disappointing for Dortmund as well. That They're not a team that wants to end up in Thursday night football either. Um, no, it's not, it's not a good sell to try and hang on to Haaland at that stage, is it? He ain't staying there anyway, let's be honest. No. Well, you know, he'd be mad too, but, you know, you just don't know. Maybe he decides I'll have another year here and keep developing and you just don't know. But Well, he has to try and find a club who's willing to pony up that type of bread as well, which ain't going to be that easy either. Yeah, especially um, not when your daddy and your agent want 10 million apiece. Minimum. Um, let's round it out here with Group D. This is a very intriguing group for me. Inter versus Shakhtar and Sheriff versus Real Madrid. Um, Inter, Sheriff and Real Madrid all still in the shake-up in this group. Um, yep. Obviously, obviously, um, Real Madrid leading the way with nine points, Inter on seven and Sheriff on six. Now, yep. we know it's going to be a struggle for Sheriff. They're kind of like the darlings of this year's competition, really, you know? Yep. Um, but I don't know. I don't know whether they have enough to push it over the line there. They have a home toy to Real Madrid. Um, you'd expect Real Madrid to get the job done, even though Sheriff turned them over. I think they just blew their load a little bit too soon, Sheriff, didn't they? Yeah. Um, you know, just a little bit. Um, and, and they put so much into those first three weeks. Um, I did think Inter would do the double over them, which they did. Mm. Got them back in the group, pushed Sheriff down. Um, Real have been in decent form recently. Um, obviously, Benzema. And the boy Vinicius Junior has been unbelievable. Yeah. If he's not scoring, he's assisting, and if he's not assisting, he's scoring. Yeah. Really, really coming to life there, um, and they've looked a little bit tighter at the back, which yeah. has always been the problem at Real. Mm. Um, yeah, Real and Inter are are gonna win these two games for me, and that'll be them through to the last, to the next phase. Interesting. Um, if all these picks come true, it's going to make for a heck of a, a knockout stage, isn't it? Yeah, it could be really, some good really toys. Big teams in there. Yeah, yeah really, really yeah. good. Um, yeah. The pathway to winning this Champions League ain't going to be easy this season for any team. No, but, you know, there's always going to be one, you know, there's always going to be one result that we don't see. Is yeah. it a Dortmund going out? Is it a Barca going out? Is it a United going out? someone's going into that Thursday night football that does not want to be there. Um, mm. and, and that's where maybe there might be a slightly easier path through for, for another team to maybe a quarter or a semi-final. And as soon as you get the ball rolling in there, you know, it can be can be difficult to stop teams when they start gaining a bit of traction in this over two legs, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been your preview, match week five in the Champions League. Sure to be an absolute belt. There's some great toys in there and certainly a lot of groups still with a lot to be resolved. Um, but we will know come Wednesday evening how the landscape lies. Will United have made it through against Villarreal? Will Chelsea try and top the group Oof. against Juve? Lots of stuff still to be decided. Will, as you said, will Bars and Dortmund still be there? We shall wait and see. My, uh, my pick is for Bars to go out. <sighs> Big call that one. Big, you know, big I call. always, you know, I always name me colours to the mask, man. Even with the but, Chavi, even with the Chavi bump. I think, I think Benfica are going to get enough from the new camp to uh, get them through to that next round. I don't know. That's, I think Barcelona could be very dominant against them in the new camp, but that new camp crowd there and all, and with Chavi going in there and all, it's, it's going to be a different world, isn't it? We'll see. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to you, think, you've, been uh, right, you've been right the last few weeks, so you could be yeah, putting the curse on. I think um, I really do fancy Benfica. I think they're going to go in and spoil this party. And I think the big thing is they can score goals. They're very, very dangerous. Um, and and I think that's where Barcelona could come unstuck, you know, because we know they don't have 
an abundance of talent going forward at the minute. Yeah. You know, you've obviously got Aguero who's out of action now indefinitely, more than likely. Um, you've got um, who have we got? Braithwaite and De Jong, who are still kind of flattering to deceive. You've got Dembele coming back into it, Fahi coming back into it, Coutinho only getting a, only coming on for a cameo at the weekend and stuff the, like the, that. The boy Pedri, though. The boy, but yeah, but he can't do it on his own. He can't, you know. Mm. Um. And if I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, I think he's out of tomorrow night. Oh, is he? I don't think he well, he didn't play the okay. weekend. I think he's still injured. I think the boy uh Gavri, um the other lads, uh is also awesome. He was also awesome, played on the left of a front three at the weekend. Um, but again, it's it's a tough sell at bars at the minute, you know. Um if you look at the parcel lineup from the weekend, it's three or four names on that team sheet, you'll go. Who's that? Like, so that's not a Barcelona team, you know? Yeah. Um, this won't be easy. And I think Benfica have enough in them to get a result here. We shall see. We will wait with bated breath and see what happens. So until yep. next time, my friend, a pleasure as always doing the show with you. Dynamo Podcast Network on YouTube, Spotify for audio versions of the show. Let's see how these picks go for Champions League preview match week five. Cheers, pal. Thanks, brother.